Hello, 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 hello to the team. Hope you are doing well. So today we gonna solve this interesting, interesting today's contest problem, split and merge, C problem. Many of people, many people find it hard. Maybe say they are saying in the discussion section we are just staring at the problem. We know we have to write root words, but how? How to start with? We don't know that. And where to start? Recursion we need to do something, something people thought. We'll discuss all the ideas. How can you approach this problem if this problem comes to an interview or maybe in an online assessment? And as always, my name is Sayyam and you are on my channel. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button and like the video because my always motive, motive is to convert every hard problem into easy or medium. At least the intuitive part, maybe the implementation part might be difficult, but here both are easy. Actually, it's easy. It's it's actually a medium problem. I would convert into an easy problem into intuitive idea. The thought process is easy. The implementation make it slightly medium and thought as a hard as well. So yeah, let's start. Let's start the video. Also, a quick disclaimer that we're coming with with the oops quotes and the launch video will be today. So if you're gonna interested, do check it out and also like comment that I'm excited for the oops course. It will be an in depth oops course you've never seen on the YouTube with complete practice problems and all the interview ready. Cool. So let's try to discuss this problem split and merge array transformation. Okay. You're given two integer arrays, nums1 and nums2, each of length n. You may perform the following split and merge operation on nums1. Choose a sub array from nums1. Okay. You pick a sub array. Fine. You would remove that sub array. From the nums one, and then you can add the sub array as it is somewhere else. For example, for example, for example, what are you gonna do? Let's say you pick this sub array, you remove this, what remaining is three. When you pick it, put it here, just like that. And this is how the transformation is changing. Cool. Reinsert the remove sub array in this original order at any position the remaining edits between any two elements at the very start or at the very end. It's your choice. Return the minimum number of split and merge operation needed to transform nums1 into nums2. Okay. First thing that comes to your mind is, oh, it must be some dp, maybe some n square solution. But when you go to the constraints, you see, oh, 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 n is still sick. Interesting. Lead code is changing. Clearly, it gives an idea that maybe the complexity is in factorial, maybe the complexity is recursion. Many things come to your mind. Recursion, backtracking, many things comes to your mind, right? I can totally understand. Fine, right? Okay, that's interesting. Then you will be like, Hamiya, ye to humne soch liya tha. Aage, aage nahi proceed kar pae. We are not able to think how to proceed. Now, the interesting thing of the problem is why the always a solution exists. That's all the interesting because it does not mention that we can convert always num1 into num2. You have to think about this. During the contest of the problem solving, is it always possible to convert? Wow, oh, that's very simple. Why it is possible? Because they mentioned that nums2 is a permutation. They mentioned it of nums1. And how does that help? Yeah, you pick one one element here, pick it one one element and change its order, put it anywhere. So at max, you need n minus one. Element. This is the highest. This is the highest possible number of operations required. What are you gonna do? You take, take pick one one sub array. But here, why not n? Are one element to fix only? You can rearrange the remaining element. Pick one 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 sub array. So at max, there could be n minus one. So that's the first thought process. Should you comes to your mind? Okay, yeah, always the solution exists. That we are sure about. What's next? What's next? Acha, have you solved this problem? You must have solved it. You must have solved it. You have a string S1. It's a standard DSA problem, S1. And you have to convert into string S2. String S2. You can iterate and change any character. Any character. Any character. Remember this problem. Do you remember? You must have solved it. Try to recall. Try to recall. I will give you a hint. I will give you a hint. I will give you a hint. It's a graph problem. It's a graph. How? How we think about graph here? Uh, you will be like, uh, this is a string. I have to reach here. Okay. And I need to minimum number of operation to convert string into string S2. And I will also put the link of this problem into description. And 
any character to any character you will be like yeah yeah, yeah i remember I, I iterated on the all the characters and then i will create new strings out of it and just keep checking how are you gonna do it bfs right you got the idea of bfs how bfs how bfs will help bfs is a level order traversal it's a level order traversal and if you remember carefully in many such problems of, of that it's in many such problems of the bfs if you remember recall properly the levels the levels help us predicting what that okay one operation required to transform into this one operation required into this because all are just one edge weights right there's no weight corresponding to that and these are the operation and you have solved must have solved these kind of bfs kind of problems when you convert one number into another number something like that that the intuition comes of the bfs thing okay you will be like yeah now how you can apply here all right it's very simple you are at nums one you are at nums one you're a particular nums one then what you what are the op first of one number of operation is applied you go over how many possibilities are there possibility is each li to ri right and what is the possibility generate all the sub arrays as zero to n they are there total n square sub arrays are there in sign into n plus one by two you can say that and then pick all the sub arrays here you can pick zero then you can pick one and then you can pick two to two means like i'm saying it's like that and then you can go about all the sub arrays zero to one zero to two go of all the sub arrays and you can do remove this i'm doing this remove operation right you will be like ha 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 bhai i'm getting the hint and since all brute force you can do that you can remove at the particular level this operation in one go right remove any sub array literally remove any sub array this is a brute force thing sub array this is this is very interesting this time that this is we have to remove literally that's why here i will i, I don't expect you to solve this problem without the help of google why because some functions are there which you don't know that erasing because if you do it manually it will take a lot of amount of time the standard implemented functions available so why don't you use them so we'll show you in the code part but at least understand the logic that how we're gonna do it then you can google it because i don't want to google you the solution that's not the idea right okay remove any sub array how oh, yeah it's very good how oh, let me also give an example but let's say it's one two three uh what are the sub arrays sub arrays are one and two and three and one two and one three and two three and one two three now obviously we won't remove one two three so i'm not considering this case you will be like i'm here there will be that much amount of sub array there will be six sub arrays so you can remove this and the sub array the remaining would be like two three it would be one three and it would be like one two it would be three it would be two it would be one this is the remaining thing left and this is the removed part and then you can put it somewhere anyway right this is the first step and then you can do the similar step on the another level for by creating more firstly you have to put it also right you have to put it in anywhere now you can put it where you can put it like this you can put it like this you can put it like this right so what is the high level idea literally remove any sub array remove any sub array the first step then what are you going to do iterate on the remaining array left after deletion which is left after deletion right which is left after deletion and then add this sub array sub array there okay side idea that's a high level idea okay yeah yeah we can do this we can do this and then you push this into the queue again push this new vector into the queue again you will be like oh yeah i am now getting some hints hmm this is going to work this is going to work but can you always push it think about it think about it think about from here let's try to observe something okay you got these two new sub arrays from here right let's try to do from here 2 1 3 are this is already we got we are again pushing it no that's why 
stop maintain a set maintain a visited vector set a visited vector see you don't need to optimize something it's only six size sub array so just brute force it visited vector set that whether this new vector is already visited or not is already visited or not and then if it is already not visited then you can push it right and this is the idea so what you gonna do this i explained you and let's me just quickly explain you that how you're gonna do the things in a right manner now what are you gonna do you initialize a queue now see you can do bfs in two ways either you know one trick of the bfs now also one more thing you can ask me why bfs if you remember carefully it gives the shortest path problem right no particular solution so when you reach and doing these operation and you find particular nums when converted and which is equals to num2 you will return from there itself why because it's a shortest path algorithm if you remember unit at wages it will be the shortest path algorithm that's why we're using bfs so we can start with a pair n of int and a vector of int the vector for original things okay we can start from there and then we can start from our where will we start from zero operation we have did and then our nums one okay and then what are you gonna do you're gonna do a standard bfs standard bfs what are you gonna do in bfs firstly pop out front node front vector okay now obviously the distance and operations you have performed front vector and the number of operations performed until now perform until now until now this is the first step now what are you gonna do now for this particular vector for this vector see you're not gonna go and generate sub in the original lumps one no now in this modified vector you're gonna do for this vector generate all sub -arrays. generate all sub -arrays. remove them remove them from your front node okay obviously you need to create a new vector for that because you don't want to disturb your front vector and then what you're going to do add it somewhere in the remaining vector in remaining vector idea is very simple just the implementation is tricky and i will show you it's not tricky actually you can go and iterate for all the indices all remaining indices k k okay and this is the have idea and then what are you gonna do check you will now now you got a new vector next after pushing or after inserting and then check whether might be doing bfs also right maintain a visited vector whether we have already processed it or not already visited this or not and it's a very efficient solution it's a very efficient solution because you're using a simple queue. you don't need a priority why need a priority queue? because we are doing the first level right <laughs> where whenever we reach the first occurrence that we find this vector this our front vector to be nums we just return it let me just quickly show you the implementation and if till here you understood the whole idea do make sure to like click the like button and share with your friends it's amazing solution i got it actually quickly go through the solution yeah uh, yeah you are explaining good okay we are understanding something and we are able to write the code i want you to write code stop from here try to write the code if you don't able to do that come back come back no problem q okay it initializes and then what we did this is the number of operation initially zero and initially we put nums of zero and then we initialize okay nums of one okay inserted visited fine no problem then we front vector we popped it out the number of count operation perform until now which is count we did that and we just pop it out okay now we will check oh if we reach reach final level reach the destination what is our destination it's not a destination you want the placement right this is the destination here yeah, nums2 is the destination return the number of operation which you did in count okay 
there's another way of implementing bfs as well just you do a size q dot size while size minus minus that also you can do that you can maintain a level vector same thing you don't need to maintain the account in the q state as well but this is a easier implementation of that so yeah you can go with both both the ways now what you going to do you can generate all the sub arrays for what our v vector which is front vector right and then what you going to do is just copy that into a neighbor vector because we want to modify into the neighbor vector we cannot modify the v vector because we have to do every time for new sub array so firstly this mm -hmm. the thing to generate the sub array i to j and just copy this into a new thing v dot begin v dot end i say j this is a sub array from i to j we got it okay then what you going to do you just erase this sub array from your neighbor vector nothing but the front vector okay and then what you going to do gonna do the size thing that okay how many sizes there are of a neighbor the remaining size this is the reduced size okay now we can do and insert any position insert at start insert at end it co covers all the cases go over all the indexes 0 1 2 till 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 size minus the remaining index minus 1 right and then what you going to do this is the operation you again create a new vector neighbor because you cannot modify the neighbor remember that because you remove this because you have to change this also so you have to again create a copy of this neighbor next and insert it next dot begin and this sub array you need to insert which you have calculated here right i to j it's you can google these things you can google this stuff i know that most of us don't use this very frequently but yeah this is a good thing like it will save your time much in complexity as well just sub and indexes i to j plus 1 this is the indexes till you want to insert that's why you have to do that i to j you have to do a plus 1 because it do a sort of one less thing there so you have to do one extra here this is the implementation things and this is next dot insert dot k that kth index you want to insert sub dot begin sub dot end and then if you found the sub array not found the sub array then you insert it into the queue as well and you do a count plus 1 increase the operation right increase a level increase a level if you reached from this state the level the operations are 1 plus 1 which is equals to 2 since c and then that's all this is our final array look like and this is return minus 1 we did that and this not very difficult implementation as well thing is we generate all sub arrays remove this sub array literally we remove the sub array inserted this sub array we literally did that because the constraint are very lower so if you like the solution make sure you to like with the video subscribe to the channel also we are coming up with a new course oops course which will change the your entire thing of preparation because i will be coming with too much intuitive oops course with practical questions interview questions practice assignments for you guys and stay tuned for the further updates because the launch video will be today you will be excited to so comment down if you are excited cool if you like the video comment down that as well so we'll see you in the next video